the grace of God has reached for me, and pulled me from the raging sea, and I am safe on this solid ground, the Lord is my salvation, I will not fear in darkness fall, His strength will Scaly's wall, and I adore of the rising sun. The Lord is my salvation. Who is like the Lord our God, strong to stay faithful in love? By death is faith and the victory won. My hope is hidden in the Lord. He bows each promise of His word. When winter fades and a spring will come, the Lord is my salvation. In times of waiting, times of need, when I know lost, when I am. Welcome to St Saviour's and St John's and to online worship this Sunday. My name is Rick, I'm the vicar of Chapeltown and I also help the leaders up at High Green. And on behalf of them, it's just say it's lovely to have you with us. I'm going to be leading our worship today uh, and I'll be sharing that with some of our musicians, with Jim, our curate, who'll be preaching, and as you will see, a galaxy of other folks helping lead today. Well, we know that with us are folks from far further afield than North Sheffield. So can I say, whoever you are, wherever you are, you are extremely welcome. We are really glad you're here and we hope you enjoy your time with us. Well, before we do anything else, we're going to remember why it is we've come here today. We're going to greet each other in the name of the living God. As ever in our prayers, please join with me in the words in bold type. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
let us rejoice and be glad in it. So here we are for Sunday worship. Just a couple of things that will help you, I think, for today's service. It'll firstly help if you have a Bible somewhere to hand. We're going to be listening to it, reading it together, so do have one of those. And secondly, all the words that you need to sing or to pray will appear on the screen just here so you can follow and join in. And now we have something special, kids, especially for you, for the younger members of the church family. And I'm going to hand over to Ruth. Are we nearly there yet? Not quite. Oh, so tired, so bored. I know, let's play I Spy. I Spy, Myla's Lie. So, oh, no, I can't. Are we nearly there yet? Nearly. Come on, we've got to be nearly there yet now. We're getting closer. I have no clue where I am. Google Maps, pointless. I'm exhausted. Right. Turn. Is this north? South? East? Oh, completely lost but I will find my way. Now I'm sure you've all been on a, a long journey or a long climb and it, if you feel so impatient don't you? You just constantly want to know when you'll get there, maybe you're going on holiday, maybe you're going somewhere something really exciting or maybe you're going somewhere where you don't know where, you, where you'll end up and you just, you're just so desperate to get there, constantly asking when will we get there, how long will it be? Anyway, why don't you listen out in the sermon? I'm going to be talking about a special journey and I wonder where we'll end up. Thank you so much Ruth. Well that takes us very nicely to the theme of our service today and as we continue our series of studies in the little letter of 1 Peter in the New Testament. It was written by Jesus' friend and follower Peter the fisherman. And of course we're thinking particularly today how we need to learn more about the journey of following Jesus. So why don't we turn to the Lord now and ask for his help that we might meet with him as we worship today. A prayer will appear just on the screen. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we've prayed, free our praise, inspire our prayer. That's what we're going to do in our opening song today. It's a beautiful song that talks of the story, really, of how God in his tenderness reaches into the messiness and the failure of our lives and plucks us out to rescue us and love us. We're going to sing, The grace of God has reached for me. from the raging sea and I am 
safe on this solid ground. The Lord is my salvation. I will not fear a darkness falls. His strength will help me scale these walls. I'm not a dawn of the rising sun. The Lord is my salvation. My debt is paid and the victory won. The Lord is my salvation. As we come to worship today, we come as we always do, only too aware of those debts, the debts we owe other people and of course the unpayable debt that we owe our maker and our father. So we're also aware that actually he is a father who delights to give us a new start. We're going to do that by returning to the cross again today, remembering how Jesus paid it all. And yet again, we want to let his payment cover every failure, every debt, every single time we feel ashamed of as we come to a time of saying sorry and receiving fresh forgiveness. We're going to begin with a few moments of quiet reflection. What is it today or even this week that you would like to ask for God's forgiveness for? The Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. We confess our sins in penitence 
and faith. Your word convicts us. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us to repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Grant your people, O Lord, according to your word, your pardon and peace, time for amendment of life and the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Interesting, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Lord doesn't just give us pardon and peace, he gives us new life and grace. And we find that, of course, every time we open up the Bible and the Spirit takes those ancient words and we hear them as a living voice, the Word of God. Well, kids, you may know a great song about that, and Steve and Georgina are going to lead us in it in just a moment. But just a warning or an encouragement, this word does have action, this song rather does have actions, so please feel free to join in or not as you feel comfortable. It's a song called Your Word is a Lamp to My Feet. Well, I don't know if you realised, but you just learned a Bible verse, Psalm 119, verse 105. Yeah, this book is alive. And that's why we're going to take some decent time to listen to it now. First of all, Eldon is going to do the Bible reading, and then Jim is going to come and open that up for us a little bit. So before we hear God's word, why don't we pray, both for Eldon and Jim and for ourselves, as we come to listen. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you that it's alive and it shows us the way. Please help us to look, listen and watch where you want us to go. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Today's New Testament reading is Peter 1, chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Therefore, since God suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffered in the body is done with sin. As a result, they don't, do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry, they're surprised that you do not join them in their reckless wild living, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached even to those now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. 
The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of a sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful servants of God's grace in all its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It hardly makes sense for me to say welcome when all of you are doing such a brilliant job of welcoming us, but welcome anyway. It also feels a bit strange to be preaching to you of people that I really don't yet know. So I'm just going to rely on the fact that we are all human beings and we all share the human condition and you probably have needed to hear the same things that I've needed to hear. And when we meet, you can tell me where I've got that wrong. So before I begin, uh, let me pray. God our Father, through the Apostle Peter you have been teaching and encouraging your people for over 2,000 years. Would you please teach and encourage us today, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Well I wonder just how your life feels at the moment. Let me start by telling you a little bit about ours. In the last few weeks, we have written to and emailed 46 different organisations to give them our changes of contact details and address. Some of them we have written to multiple times because the message doesn't always get through and all of them we've had to contact in various different ways. And then there's broadband. I started the process of broadband transfer in May and we still don't have broadband. In fact, the latest development is that the second broadband provider I've dealt with managed to deliver our router to our old address only yesterday. You will understand that my children are not very pleased with me and with some justification. And of course, it's not just us. I know that COVID-19 makes everybody's life that much more complicated. Lots of people are just bogged down in the stuff of life at the moment. Orders go to the wrong place. Arrangements and plans are harder to make. Work is different and perhaps more complicated. And schools have been off for so long that sometimes even our children wish they would start again. You see, the stuff of life can feel like sinking stand that stops us making any progress with Jesus at all. And I think that happens in two main ways. The first, there's opposition. Being patient or being honest or having principles can make it that much harder just to get things done. And so the temptation is not to bother. Also, I think there's distraction. Just keeping your head above water with all the stuff of life to manage can make it feel as though the extra work of praying or gathering on a Sunday or practically loving other people is just more than you can possibly face. I wonder if you feel that you're just too bogged down by the stuff of life to make any realistic Christian progress at the moment. Well, Peter often felt like giving up. And so as he writes to us about this, it is well worth listening. And the first thing that Peter says is to remind us that we're on a climb. Rick told us last week that we're travellers. Well, this week, Peter tells us what kind of travellers. We're climbers. And so if it feels tough and you're wondering why, here's part of the answer. Climbing is hard work. Let me show you Peter's logic. Our reading follows chapter three. And in chapter three, Peter writes that in the body, Jesus had to suffer to the point of death. But now... In the spirit, he has life enough to give away. He went from a low mortal life, a life like ours, 
to a high royal life with his father. That comparison is in verses 18 and then 22 for those who want to chase it up. Therefore, says Peter at the start of today's reading, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered is done with sin. I don't want to spend too much time on possible confusions here, but just let me clarify a couple of things. Um, from the body to the spirit does not mean that Jesus was once physical and is now some kind of floating ghost. What it does mean is that one body was mortal and was destined for decay, but the body he has now is immortal and will always thrive. Secondly, from earth to heaven doesn't mean that where he is now is positioned vertically above our heads, but it does mean that Jesus lives now in a reality that is so much higher and better than this. In fact, in many ways, our mortal world is like a kind of broken down, decaying copy of where he is now. Here, however, once we've dealt with the misunderstandings, is Peter's real point. Where you are now, where I am now, is like a boggy valley below cloud level. Where we're climbing to is like the top of the world above cloud level. I had a friend at university called Sandeep, and Sandeep loved expeditions and came to be effectively a professional mountaineer. He has climbed Everest three times, and I vividly remember the first time he came back. And what he wanted to do was to show me photographs from the top of the world. He told me how he'd had to slog through wind and fog and cold and wet for weeks on end, and then when he emerged above cloud level, and saw the clouds spreading out below him and the peaks coming up through the clouds and it was bright and it was clear, he felt like he never wanted to go down again. I think many mountaineers have had that. That, says Peter, is the kind of climb that we are on. Just now, we really are in a boggy valley below cloud level and because of that we can't see the summit. But because we're on a climb, where we're heading really is the summit. So if you are bogged down in the stuff of life below cloud level, the one thing you should not do is let opposition or distraction stop you climbing. If you do that, you won't make the summit. I've done quite a bit of climbing and hill walking. Perhaps you have too. If you have, you'll know the big question that's always in your mind on the way up. How far? And of course, the way mountains often work makes that a very live question because just as you come up to the shoulder of the mountain thinking that you've hit the top, suddenly you see path stretching out ahead of you and it looks steeper and harder than what you've just come up. And I think sometimes the Christian life can feel a little bit like that too. False summits. Growing in Christ-like character can be extremely painful and we make backward steps sometimes, and it's never over. And there are certain areas of sin that are so deceptive and so enslaving, it feels like we will never break free. Honestly, sometimes just getting to church can feel like a step too far. So, are we nearly there is not only an understandable question, in some ways it's a good question. Well, Peter thankfully answers that question for us and it is the answer that every child wants to know when they say are we nearly there yet because basically Peter says yes look at uh, 4 verse 7 Peter says the end of all things is near in other words yes we're nearly there of course Peter had been following Jesus since his 20s or perhaps his early 30s and he was now quite an old man he was probably like those older Christians that, as they look ahead, they feel that their future with Jesus is almost close enough to touch. I probably shouldn't tell you this, but Rick has given me a short list of older saints, and he said to me, go and visit these people, Jim. It will just be good for you. I wonder how many of you know that feeling. But Peter is writing to folk of all ages, just like us. So... How can he say the end is near? 
Well, I think he says it because Peter has learned the long view. You see, by the long view of a human life, this period of mortal struggle is vanishingly short compared with the immortal life of joy and peace that will stretch out forever. Elsewhere, it's called the twinkling of an eye. And by the long view of history, the period that we're in now between Jesus's life and Jesus's return really is the last chapter of our civilization, and we're already several pages in. There's a reason that Peter needs to remind us that we're nearly there, and that is this, it doesn't feel like it. The truth is, the end feels just like the middle and the beginning, unless you know that you're nearly there. The second time Sandeep came back from Everest, he'd had several nasty shocks, and one of them was this. As he was climbing, he'd encountered a group of seven bodies. They were the bodies of an Indian expedition trying to climb Everest, and they'd lost their bearings a few weeks before. They'd given up hope, they'd sat down, and the cold had overwhelmed them. And as Sandeep was telling me about it, this is the part that made him saddest. He said they were literally a hundred yards from the summit. These men had climbed 99.9% .9 of the world's highest mountain, but because they didn't know they were nearly there, they gave up hope. You see, Peter has been there. He's given up hope and had to be restored, and he just doesn't want you to do the same. It may not feel as though you're nearly there, but it doesn't change the fact that it's true. Well, that leaves me with just one last question, and it's this. How do I keep going? You see, on a mountain, I know what to do. Um, I dig deeper into my own resources. Perhaps I make sure I take good breaks. Perhaps I try and pace myself or look for a different route if the route ahead looks hard. But if you've ever tried any of those strategies in your Christian life, you will know that they are very, very limited in value. You see, digging into my resources is never enough to change me or change my heart. Taking breaks always leaves me further back, with less energy to carry on rather than more. Progress in the Christian life is never paced. Sometimes I feel like I'm leaping ahead and other times I feel like I'm holding on with my fingernails. And there is no other path. The only way forward in the Christian life is through the gate that Jesus opened and along the path that he followed. So how do I keep going is a good question. Well, Peter's answer is spread all the way through the passage we've read. And this is it. Stay roped in. Roping in is what climbers do when the going is tough, and it basically means that they tie themselves together. First of all, stay roped into one another. Let me read uh, verses 8 to 10 for you. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one of you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Please understand, this is not a list of Christian good deeds. It's actually not even just practical advice like, you do better working as a team. It's far deeper than that. Because one of the deepest lies of Satan is that you and I are more important than the person next to us. And one of the deepest truths of the cross is that Jesus, the God-man, counted his life less significant than ours when he died for us. That means that you simply cannot follow Jesus fully and properly alone, just you and him. You follow him as you count other people's lives above your own. Stay roped in and let those ropes be short and thick. 
It is as we love one another and as we serve one another that we follow Jesus. They are inseparable. Secondly, stay roped into Jesus. Peter's whole point has been that we are on the same climb as Jesus. It's because of that that when we suffer, we can look and see that he suffered and we know we're on the right path. But here's the thing. We're not following that path as if we were just trying to pick out his footsteps. It's much better than that. We're actually roped in to Jesus. What I mean is this. The St John's Chapel Town Climbing Party has a climb leader who we are all roped into, and that is Jesus. The St Saviour's High Green Climbing Party have a climbing leader that we are all roped into, and that is Jesus. There is only one reason that we can be confident of making the summit, and that is that he made the summit, and that he will not let us fall. Let me read to you verse 11, and we will finish there. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power for ever and ever. Amen. Let me pray. God our Father, life is sometimes very hard in the cloudy, foggy, boggy valley of this mortal life. Thank you that you've been here. And thank you that you have taught us today to remember that we are on a climb and it's a climb that leads somewhere. Thank you for the surprising news that however little it feels like it, we are in every real sense from the long view, really nearly there. What is left is just a twinkling in the eye. And thank you finally, Heavenly Father, that you have roped us in to Jesus, our Redeemer, and you have roped us into one another. May we, by your grace, always stay roped in. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, Jim. Well, there we are. Last week we were travellers. This week, I guess you could call us climbers. On a climb, nearly there, and staying roped in. Well, one way we stay roped to e towards each other is by encouraging each other, particularly to hold firm to the things we believe. And we do that week by week by sharing some very ancient words called the Apostles' Creed. They give us, if you like, a, a series of snapshots of God the Trinity, who he is and what he's done. And we really enjoy sharing those together. We're going to do that now, so I'm going to invite you, if you can, please to stand with me. And today, a team of people are going to lead us as we share the Apostles' Creed. Now let's join together and say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary. <laughs> Suffered under Pontius Pilate. Was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen. 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 
Well, that was a little bit different, wasn't it? <laughs> Can I say a really big thank you to Ruth and the team who put all that together? Well, we want to stay roped in together, don't we? And another great way we do that is by sharing stories. Just real experiences of how Christ has very much been with us on the mountaintop and in the valley. And that's why during this pandemic, we've been hearing a series of interviews and testimonies of folks just talking about how God has been with them through these days. And that is why I was very privileged earlier this week to have a Zoom conversation with Frank Snow. And I'd love to share that with you right now. Well, friends, here I am then with Frank Snow, and it's a real privilege and delight to welcome Frank this morning. Frank, for those of us who don't know you, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, where you're from, and that sort of thing. Yes, I came to Chapel Town a year and a half ago. I began life in a little town called Heckman Dwight between Leeds and Huddersfield, and uh, after 23 years, then I started wandering the world. Uh, I was in Indonesia for uh, 12 years where I met, I didn't meet my wife there, but I married her there and we had three children there in Indonesia. Um, then uh, back in this country, well, cut a long story short, I was up in Berwick uh, teaching in a college there and uh, ordained on Holy Island as well and uh, finished my career, as it were, with uh, uh, seven years in parish work. Mm. Frank, you have been quite a traveller through the years. <laughs> so I would guess that lockdown, uh, w that must have been difficult. What, what's it been like for you personally? Well, not too bad, because of course at my age now, I'm uh, uh, not, not travelling very much, but uh, I suppose uh, little niggles like, uh, as you can see, my hair hasn't been cut for a while. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, problems such as uh, just being able to go, be in contact with the family, I suppose, has been a big problem, and friends as well. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Um, uh, have there been any sort of compensations about it, things that you've actually found that you've valued? It's been a wonderful thing, I think, that I've... Uh, I sense that um, this has been the right time for our family. Mm. My wife, uh, her last few years, was in a care home with dementia, and uh, I'm not quite certain how she would have coped with uh, the lockdown that we have at the moment. Thankfully, she was spared that when she died to, um, uh, just over two years ago. Mm. Yeah, I, I think many of us will resonate, resonate with that, Frank. It's obviously for those who are living with dementia, this is a, a very confusing time. And so, as yeah. you say, perhaps in God's mercy. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that, thank you. Mm. That's, yeah, that's great. The other um, wonderful go on, carry on, yes. please. The, the other wonderful thing has been uh, coming to Chapel Town. Mm. Uh, it was my daughter's suggestion that uh, we... Uh, joined forces. Uh, she was on her own and we found a house in Chapel Town. It's been uh, wonderful to have her keeping an eye on me, as she says, and uh, also to have the church here in Chapel Town. I've been uh, wonderfully blessed by the ministry here. Yeah. Well, I want to pick up on that, Frank, because I, I happen to know uh, that you received a letter from one of our young people. Would you like to just tell us about that? Yes, a letter from Oliver out of the blue was uh, quite surprising and uh, very exciting, really, that uh, he wanted to be interested in someone my age. <laughs> but uh, he'd heard that I was, uh, I'd been a missionary and uh, he thought that would, must have been very exciting. And uh, he wanted to, he was thinking of doing the same thing when he gets a bit older. <laughs> and uh, so I uh, sent him a page from uh, my uh, memoirs that I've been writing recently for the family really and uh, it was about a journey in uh, in the island of Sulawesi that I made to visit a church there and uh, he wrote back very excited saying oh wonderful and the whole family had read it and thought it was a um, where they are being made into a film and you could call it uh, Indiana Jones in Doc Collins. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So that was obviously quite a, a lovely contact to have, Frank. Yes, it was very nice. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's wonderful. <clears throat> Um, Frank, let me just ask perhaps a couple more things. One was to ask, um, what has kept you going spiritually through these uh, strange days? Well, I suppose more time for prayer and uh, Bible reading, mm. um, for Zoom meetings with the uh, cell group and uh, the church. And also, I think uh, wonderful is the, uh, the number of uh, former friends and colleagues and uh, um, uh, former students that I've known and that all been uh, assuring me of their support and prayer. I've been very, very grateful. It, it's wonderful to feel part of a network of care like that, isn't it? It is, it is yes. Yeah. Frank, just one <clears throat> final thing. Um, do you have any particular prayer that's on your heart at the moment that we could be joining in with or praying for you? Well, two things, I think. Uh, one, I think, is the, the great need in East Africa at the moment for Christians there who don't have the national health system that we do and uh, with the virus there. And then on top of that, of course, the locust plagues that have uh, come and uh, devastated the, the crops there for them. Yes. The second yes. one is for my son who is ill with cancer at the moment. Uh, not a Christian, but has welcomed prayer for him. And uh, I just sense that uh, God is working in his life. Mm -hmm. Frank, thank you so much. I think what it would be lovely to do, Frank, if you don't mind, why don't we pray now, just lift some of those things to the Lord now. Let's just, just take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us all in these strange and difficult days. Thank you particularly for watching over and keeping Frank and his family. Father, we do lift them to you at the moment and pray particularly for Frank's son, for your grace, for your work in his life, to your glory and his blessing. Uh, and Father, we pray too for our, our brothers and sisters and indeed folks across the world where this uh, virus is even more serious than for us. We think of those in East Africa. We think too of this locust plague yeah, in India and in parts of Asia at the moment and pray that you would please sustain governments and all those seeking to bring help. And Lord, may your people be beacons of light, even in the darkest of places we pray. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, Frank, we have just been really delighted to have this time with you. Thank you for sparing the time. Uh, oh, thank you for uh, your patience. <laughs> Not at all. It's been lovely to see you, Frank. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, it was a real privilege to meet with Frank this week, and I hope you enjoyed meeting with him as well. How lovely to see the generations encouraging each other as, as Oliver wrote to Frank and then Frank shared his memoirs with him. Now we're going to continue to be blessed by the generations because Amber, one of our young people, is going to come and lead us as we bring our prayers for our world, for our church, and for ourselves. Let's join Amber. Dear Lord, as the coronavirus pandemic continues, we thank you for family and friendship. We pray for all those going back to school and work and that you will have your hand upon them as they start heading back to normal routines. We pray for those in Leicester who are remaining in lockdown and that you have healing on the city. We pray for all those waiting to an end to the restrictions, for patience and understanding, for the people who have served and are serving others. We thank you for their support and care. We pray for our government and church leaders and those in positions of authority. May they make the right decisions and follow your will. We pray for everyone as we live and speak for Jesus this week. We pray for those affected by illness and ask for your love and healing to surround them in these very difficult times. We'll just take a few minutes now to think of those you know. We especially pray for Judith Winks and her family, that you will be with them and ensure Judith receives the care and support she needs. Amen. 
The collect for this week is, Gracious Father, by the obedience of Jesus, you brought salvation to our wayward world. Draw us into harmony with your will, that we may find all things restored in him, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as our Father taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much, Amber. Well, friends, our time together is nearly done, but we do want to finish with a final burst of gratitude and of praise to our good and wonderful Father. Yes, we've heard the climb ahead will sometimes be tough and there will be struggles, there'll be ups and downs. But the wonderful news is that Jesus gives us the grace and the help we need every step of the way. And our last song sort of picks up on that, picturing Jesus' help as being like robes, clothing we wear that enable us to serve our royal master. It's a song called King of Kings, Majesty. Well, thank you so much to Fee and Paul, to Steve and Georgina for leading our worship today. Thank you for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed your time with us and we do hope you'll join us again.
And in fact, if you can't wait till then, then you can always follow us during the week, every single day, we have online morning prayer at nine o'clock on our Facebook page, or indeed you can follow it a little bit later in the day. Feel free to join us for that. And now can I just say a word? It may be that there are things you've heard or seen in the service today that have raised questions for you. It may even be that you would not call yourself a Christian or you'd like to find out more. You're thinking, I just don't understand what, what these people are talking about. Jesus is a living reality in their lives. If that's something you would like to explore, why not connect with us? You can do that really easily by going to the coronavirus page of our website, scroll down and there there's a form you can fill in and we would love to get back to you. So please do connect with us if you find that helpful. Now I'm afraid I do need to mention a few items of church family news. Most of them are in the new sheet, which you're, if you're a regular at St John's, you should have received by email in your inbox this week. Now can I just say an honest word about that? We all get a lot of emails. It's very tempting just to kind of pop them away. Can I encourage you, please don't do that with the church one and with the new sheet. It's a really important way of finding out what's going on at St. John's. For instance, did you know you can join us for our weekend away in October? I'm delighted to say that the Hayes in Swanwick, where we are going for a weekend away, will be opening this month, socially distancing all the precautions that we need, and they'd love to welcome us. We do still have some places left on that, but they are going. If you go to the new sheet, it'll tell you how you can join us, and perhaps particularly this year, it may be the first time some of us will have gathered in any way for some time. So do check out the new sheet. And talking about gathering, let me say a word or two about why we're still here online. You may be thinking, did not the government announce from the 4th of July, public worship can begin again? And the answer is yes and no. <laughs> the government and the House of Bishops have given us guidelines. And what that makes it clear is this. Yes, we can worship in some very limited ways. There will be no singing. We will have to be two metres apart. Uh, the act of worship will have to be very brief. We cannot stay at the end. We cannot linger to talk. We have to leave straight away. It will be almost impossible to do children's work. And of course, vulnerable adults and those who are self-isolating are unlikely to be able to join us. All the precautions, of course, will take a great deal of preparation. So yes, in theory, However, what the government and the bishops have said is that churches may want to think very carefully before recommencing public worship. We are in a time of pandemic. Any public gathering is a risky thing to do and increases the level of risk. Is it the Christian thing to do to increase that level? You may want to think, yes, premiership football is happening, but there's no one watching other than on a screen. So perhaps we could learn from the footballing fraternity. So having thought and prayed about this, the current view of the leaders at St. John's, and I also believe at St. Saviour's, is this. We will carry on worshipping like this online until at least early September. Things are changing all the time and we want to see what would be the wise and safe thing to do. We will keep you posted and we're very much open to ideas. So please do contact us. Again, the coronavirus page is a great way to do that. Or if you know a church council member at St. John's or at St. Saviour's, why not let them know your thoughts? I know that the St. Saviour's Church Council are meeting this coming week. Uh, and I also know the St. John's a week on Monday, uh, PCC will be meeting. So do let them know your thoughts. And talking of online worship, we are um, looking urgently for somebody to join our online worship team. Putting together an act of worship like this requires a bit of work. And we'd love to find somebody to help with video editing. If that's something you're familiar with or would like to try and learn, perhaps you're familiar with iMovie or other software, we have our own software we can share with you, please contact either Carl, our youth minister, or myself really quite soon. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. 
Let me remind you about live chat. When I've said goodbye in a moment or two, uh, we will still be able to chat with each other through our YouTube channel. Folks from St. Saviour's and St. John's will be there, so do stay for the next 10, 15 minutes or so. Be lovely to have some time with you. And of course, whether or not we're meeting physically, nothing can stop us praying for each other, listening to God's word together, keeping in touch by text and phone and Zoom and in all those different ways. And most of all, nothing can stop us being blessed and strengthened by the living God. So we're going to finish with a wonderful prayer of blessing. With the strength God supplies, be alert and of sober mind. Love each other deeply. Use your gifts to serve others. Speak the very words of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us all forevermore. Amen. Well, it's been a real privilege to share with you this morning. We do hope you've enjoyed your time with us. We hope to see you same time, same place next week, but goodbye for now.